You stayed well by it in Egypt. Yeah. With its sleep day out of countenance and made the night light with drinking. Eight wild boars roasted whole at a breakfast and but 12 persons there. Is this true? This was but as a fly by an eagle. The most triumphant lady of Fripport is squared. When she first met Mark Antony, she burst up his heart upon the river of Sydney. There she appeared indeed, or my report to devise it well. I'll tell you. The barge she sat in like a burnished throne, burned on the water. The poop was beaten gold, purple sails, and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them. The oars were silver, which to the tune of flutes kept stroke, and made the water which they beat to follow faster as amorous of their strokes. For her own person, it beggared all description. She did lie in her pavilion, cloth of gold of tissue. Or picturing that Venus, where we see the fancy outwork nature. On each side her stood pretty dimpled boys, like smiling cupids with divers colored fans, whose wind did seem to glow the delicate cheeks which they did cool, and what they undid, did. A rare for Antony. A gentle women. Like the Nereides, so many mermaids tended under the eyes and made their bends adornings. At the helm, a seeming mermaid steers. The silken tackle swell with the touches of those flower soft hands that yearly frame the office. And from the barge, a strange, invisible Perfume hits the sense of the adjacent walls. <laughs> the city casts the people out upon her. And Antony, enthroned in the marketplace, did sit alone whistling to the air, <laughs> which but for vacancy had gone to gaze on Cleopatra too, and made a gap in nature. Rare Egyptian. Upon her landing, Antony sent to her, invited her to supper. She replied, it were better he became her guest, which she entreated. Uh. <laughs> Our courteous Antony, whom ne'er the word of no woman heard speak, <laughs> being barbered ten times or ghost of the feast, and for his ordinary, pays his heart for what his eyes eat only. Royal. Wench. She made great Caesar lay his sword to bed. He ploughed her and she cropped. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her once hop forty paces through the public streets, and having lost her breath, she spoke and panted that she did make defect, perfection, and breathless power breathe forth. Now Antony must leave her utterly. Never! You will not. Age cannot wither her, nor custom stale her infinite variety. Other women cloy the appetites they feed, but she makes hungry where most she satisfies. For vilest things become themselves in her, that the holy priests bless her when she's riggish. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Antony, Octavia is a blessed lottery to him. <laughs> the world and my great office will sometimes divide me from your bosom. All which time, before the gods, my knee shall bow my prayers to them for you. My Octavia. Read not my blemishes in the world's report. I have not kept my square, but that to come shall all be done by the rule. Good night. Dear lady.
Good night, sir. Good night. Taken to rid the seas of the pirates. Pompey's father would never have made this peace. For my part, I am sorry it has turned to a drinking. We look not for Mark Antony here. Prio, is he married to Cleopatra? Caesar's sister is called Octavia. True, she was the wife of Caius Marcellus. She is now the wife of Marcus Antonius. Seals! Ah, it is true. Now is he and Caesar forever knit together? If I were bound to divine of this unity, I would not prophesy so. I think the policy of the purpose made more to the marriage than the love of the parties. You shall find the band which seems to tie their friendship together will be the very strangler of their amity. Octavia is of a holy, cold, and still conversation. Who would not have his wife so? Not he that is himself not so, which is Mark Antony. <laughs> he will to his Egyptian dish again. <laughs> Then to the size of Octavia, over the fire up in Caesar. Come, sir, I have a health for you. I shall take it. We have used our throats in Egypt. <laughs> Thus do they, sir. They take the flow of the Nile by certain scales of the pyramid. They can tell by the height, the lowness, or the mean, if girth or poison. <laughs> you have strange serpents there. Aye. Your serpent of Egypt now is bred, is bred of your mud by the obligation of your son. So is your crocodile. Oh, the health to I'm not so well as I should be, but I'll never out. Nay, 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 suddenly. I have heard that your Ptolemy's pyramids are very goodly things. I... Without contradiction, I have heard that. Ptolemy's A hell's to! <laughs> what manner of thing is your crocodile? <laughs> it is shaped. <laughs> Like itself. It is as broad as it has breadth. It's just as high as it is, and it moves with its own organs. It lives by that which nourishes it, and the elements, once out of it, it transmigrates. What color is it all? Ah, of its own color, too. <laughs> She's a strange serpent. She is so. And the tears of it are wet. <laughs> Will this description satisfy him? A health to This is 
is not yet an Alexandrian feast. Oh! It ripens towards it. Strike the vessels. Ho! Oh, here's to. I could well forbear it. It is oh. monstrous labor when I wash my brain and it grows fouler. Oh, oh be a child of the time. Possess <laughs> <laughs> it. I'll make answer. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. 